This video explains how to apply the SPO6LT function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In the first example of this video, I want to show you how to convert a data object from the character string class to the POSIX-LT class using the SPO6LT function. And for this, we first need to create a character string object that contains a date and a time component. And we can do that as you can see in line two of the code. So after running this line of code, a new data object called x1 is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data object to the bottom using line three of the code. And then you can see that we have created a character string object, which contains the 22nd of October, 2025. And it also contains a time component, which in this case is 073259. So if we check the class of this data object using the class function, as you can see in line five of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that our data object currently has the character class. Now, if we want to convert this data object to a proper date and time object, we can use the SPO6LT function, as you can see in line seven. And in this case, I'm simply applying this function to our data object and I'm storing the output of this in a new data object that I'm calling x1 po6. So after running line seven of the code, this new data object is appearing at the top right and we can print it as you can see in line eight of the code. And then you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that we have created a new data object called x1 po6 and this data object already contains a time zone but besides that, it looks exactly the same as our input data object. However, if we apply the class function once again to this data object, as you can see in line 10 of the code, you can see that the class of our new data object is the POSIX LT class. And this is a class that is typically used for dates and types. Now, in this first example, we had a very well formatted character string. However, sometimes certain components might be missing or certain components might be modified in a different order. And how to deal with that is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 12. So in this line of code, I'm creating another character string, which contains only an hour and minute component, but no seconds component. You can see this data object in the RStudio console by running line 13 of the code. So as I have said before, this time we only have the hours and minutes. And you can also see, by the way, that the year, month and days are formatted in different order. So if you now apply the SPO6LT function to this data object, as we did in the first example, in line 15 of the code, you can see that a new data object is created, which is called X2A PO6. However, if you now have a look at this data object, you can see that the data object does not really make sense. And the reason for that is that the SPO6LT function does not know in which order our character string is specified. And for that reason, we also need to apply the format argument, as you can see in lines 18 and 19 of the code. So in these lines of code, I'm once again using the SPO6LT function and I'm applying this function to our new data object X2. However, in addition, I'm also using the format argument and to the format argument, I'm specifying the correct ordering of the components in our character string. So as you can see first, our character string contains the day, then the month, then the year, then hours and last but not least minutes. So after running lines 18 and 19 of the code, a new data object called XB PO6 is created and we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 20 of the code. And then you can see that we have properly formatted our date and time object. So you can see that we have rearranged our year, month and days and we have added the zero second component at the end of the POSIX-LT object. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. 
In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.